weirdest tanks in history. From tanks so narrow that they rocked when they fired from a lateral position, to tanks made with scrap metal and no blueprints, to 100-ton colossal tanks capable of blowing holes through concrete, wartime innovation has driven engineers to develop new tanks capable of meeting the challenges created on an ever-changing battlefield. Beginning with Leonardo da Vinci over 500 years ago, tank design, function, and aesthetics have dramatically changed with new developments in warfare. The world has also seen some pretty weird, odd, and downright impractical tank designs over this period. So here are five of the weirdest tank designs to ever be seen in the 20th century. The STRV-74 at exactly 8 feet in width, the Stritsvan 74 was the result of Sweden's post-World War II effort to develop and modernize the Stritsvan M42, a light tank which had been in service since April 1943. By keeping the chassis of the Stritsvan M42 and replacing its turret with a completely new design that would house the 7.5cm Ivkan M36 heavy anti-aircraft gun, which was capable of penetrating 260mm armor at an angle of 90 degrees at point-blank range, Sweden's military avoided the long process of designing a new tank, which could take up to seven years to develop. The old Stridsvan M42 turrets were stripped off and set into concrete bases to form static fortifications along the country's coastline, leaving the new, updated Stridsvan 74 with novel, heavily sloped turrets that gave the tank a futuristic appearance. The tracks of the tank had to be slightly widened to accommodate such an upgrade in firepower. An industrial Volkswagen engine at the back of the turret provided power through an electric generator. But it was the impressive Scania Vebus 607 engines which allowed this tank to get up to speeds approaching 30 miles an hour. However, crews operating the tank often complained of the narrow, high profile which caused the whole tank to rock when the gun was fired at the 3 o'clock and 9 o'clock lateral positions, and they would often refer to it as senseless, which translates into senseless. Like all other Swedish tanks in service during the Cold War, the Streets von 74 never actually saw action so it's impossible to comment on how they would have fared in battle. Although it had a powerful gun that was mounted in a mantlet that had superior depression and elevation firing angles, it only had poor armor protection that, combined with its high profile, would have made it very vulnerable on the battlefield. Have you ever wanted to build your own tank? Has someone told you it would take up too much space in the garage? Now is your chance to face off against friends and enemies alike in the ultimate, immersive, free-to-play and cross-platform vehicular war game War Thunder. Using a collection of vehicles spanning over 100 years of development, starting from the 1920s, with intense PvP battles at various immersion levels for all play styles, you will find an action-packed and tactical experience. Choose your battle and emerge victorious. Available on PS5, Xbox Series X and S, PC, and and last-gen consoles. You can fight across the world in PvP combined arms battles, choosing from over 2,000 vehicles. Staring down the enemy from your plane, tank, helicopter, or warship has never felt so real as in War Thunder. Thanks to the soldiers who confirmed the accuracy of all details. And when you damage your opponent, use your damage x-ray to show the literal damage it received. Also battle accurate. This soldier recommends trying the early Merlin Spitfire for the ultimate World War II flying experience in unbelievable graphic detail and 4K resolution. Sign up for your free account today. The Bob Semple Tank During World War II, New Zealand's Minister of Works, Bob Semple, decided his country needed defending against the potential threat of a Japanese invasion. Only able to use whatever materials were at hand, Semple designed a lightweight tank constructed out of corrugated iron and tractor parts, never bothering to draw any blueprints or formal plans. After the fall of France in 1940, Britain had lost most of its tanks and equipment and was unable to send any military hardware to New Zealand, nor anywhere else in fact, so Semple encouraged the civilian population to help him manufacture his design. The tank could be constructed in hours as a tank structure was simply bolted on to a tractor base. Equipped with six Bren machine guns, the tank performed very poorly in field tests and was never widely produced or used in battle. To Semple's credit, he worked his design out from an article he had read in an American magazine and was keen in providing some sort of weapon to help defend his country. When the public openly ridiculed his design, he simply responded, I don't see anyone else coming up with any better ideas. The American T-28 Tank 
Towards the end of World War II, the Americans designed the T-28 Super Heavy Tank, which weighed nearly 100 tons and was originally intended to smash through the German defenses of the Siegfried Line in 1944. With its 105mm T-5E1 gun, capable of inflicting heavy damage on concrete and heavy fortifications, However, by the time the tank was ready for action, the Allied forces had already broken through the German lines, and the tank was sidelined. Four tracks instead of the usual two would have been used to propel the 15-foot-wide machine forward. There were no bridges or infrastructure at the time that could have withstood the weight of the T-28 tank, so it was largely accepted to be an impractical design. However, its firepower was impressive, with a casemate-style hull taking the place of a turret and housing a large anti-tank gun that could effectively hit targets 12 miles away, in addition to a 50 caliber M2 Browning machine gun. With armor plating up to 12 inches thick, the T-28 could also absorb other tank rounds with ease. Ultimately, though, the sheer size of this tank would be its biggest weakness, as it could only travel at speeds of up to 8 miles an hour, and it experienced numerous difficulties in crossing any terrain effectively. The Object 279 tank Developed in the late 1950s by Soviet engineer L. Tryonov, Object 279 was a tank with some serious expectations to fill. It had to be both capable of covering terrain otherwise inaccessible to conventional armored vehicles and strong enough to survive the shockwave of a nuclear explosion. The resultant tank design looked like something from the U.S. top-secret Nevada desert base known as Area 51. With an elliptical shield covering the entire hull, which at times could be up to 10 and a half inches thick, the tank's armor was resilient to shockwaves, heat projectiles, and equipped with CBRN protection. A four-track running gear was mounted on two rectangular beams, which also functioned as fuel tanks, powering a huge diesel engine, which could get the machine moving at speeds of up to 34 miles an hour and a range of 186 miles before refueling. Armed with both a 130mm M65 rifled gun and a KPVT coaxial machine gun, Object 279 was also capable of neutralizing enemy threats on the ground. However, as with the American T-28 tank, Soviet engineers realized the size of Object 279 made it both difficult to manufacture and deploy, so it was abandoned by the 1960s. The STRV-103 Studying armored vehicle casualty reports from the Korean War and World War II, Sweden's military found that there was a strong positive correlation between a tank's height and its risk of being hit on the battlefield. By the mid-1950s, a call went out to manufacturers for a tank design which would drastically shorten the profile. By eliminating the turret, Sven Berg, a mechanical engineer at the Swedish Arms Administration, was able to bring the height of the Stridsvan 103 tank down to just 7 feet. But the drawbacks of this dramatic redesign presented many difficulties. First, the gun itself, a Bofors L74 10.5cm L62 rifled gun, had to be fixed to the hull as there was no turret. In practice, this would mean that it was impossible to use a stabilized gun that fired on the move, meaning the tank would have to come to a complete stop in order to fire accurately. The three-man crew inside the tank could dispense one round every three seconds from the rifled gun, giving it an advantage over its most likely opponent, the Soviet T-62. In addition to this, the tank was powered by two different types of engines, one 240-horsepower Rolls-Royce opposed piston diesel engine, which allowed it to slowly cruise and maneuver into position, and one Boeing 502 turbine, which was a powerful installment that could propel the tank close to 40 miles an hour over severe terrain. Interestingly, driving gear located at the back of the tank enabled the vehicle to be driven in reverse while maintaining all previous speed capabilities. The Swedish Stridsvan 103 tank was classified as an assault tank, a fully amphibious machine that could be fitted with a flotation screen in under 20 minutes, and capable of leading devastating counter-offensives. However, as it never saw combat, one can only guess at its effectiveness. Bob Semple's tank, the American T-28 tank, both the Swedish Stridsvan 103 and Stridsvan 74 tanks, and Object 279 might all look wildly different from each other, but they all had one thing in common. None of them ever saw combat. Whether it was production issues, design flaws, or just bad timing, each of these tanks remained exercises in engineering, sidelined in practice fields and without glory. Nevertheless, one recognizes the importance of these tanks when one considers the unique history behind each of them. 
each model was designed to address a very specific threat on the battlefield, from the extremely low profile of the Stridsvon 103 to the 100-ton American T-28. The history of tanks is closely linked to the history of warfare as engineers labored tirelessly to win military contracts requiring increasingly demanding specifications. New suspension systems, turret designs, engine capabilities, and a plethora of other mechanical innovations were born out of necessity to satisfy armies competing with each other in a race for the best technology. While these tanks never saw the battlefield, their weird designs ensured their memory would never be forgotten. To play War Thunder on PC, PlayStation, or Xbox Now, sign up using the link in the description below and receive a massive free bonus pack, including a ton of premium vehicles, boosters, access to a premium account model, and more.